Good evening and welcome to the Invictus Racing League. This is Tier 1 of the Equal Performance Leagues. Uh, so the fastest drivers in IRL on display for tonight. We're here for round number 7 for the Dutch Grand Prix from the Circuit Zandvoort. Very short circuit. Probably going to get a fair bit of action uh, as the field will be quite tight. Um, my name is JPH and uh, joining me very shortly uh, will be Bruce as always. Uh, he's just a few minutes behind. He's in the, he's in the lobby already but um, he'll be back in the comms box very shortly but uh, we will carry on with qualifying um, as it gets underway for round seven. Uh, welcome to everyone who is watching the stream. It is good to have you here. Uh, watching obviously do please comment during the stream any uh opinion throughout the night uh it would always be good to see uh good evening arl how are you how are yourself mates it's uh has been a while i'm i'm very well i hope you are um it's good to see you in the lobby as well it's uh i i can't wait to see you be the first out of the pit lane like normal Bit of audio balancing so you'll be able to hear the cars. Looks a little bit cloudy. Don't know what the uh, weather forecast is. We haven't had a, a weather minion update. But we will get the track map on. And we're on board there, Al, who is, as per normal, the first man out on the circuit. He's gone on the medium tyres, obviously. Probably hasn't done much in the way of practice for ARL. So he murked on the intermediate, so... Are we expecting a little bit of rain quite early on? Oh, you do wonder. He's not expecting anything special. Hasn't raced for a while. He's just looking for a finish tonight. Well, a finish could get you into the points. Uh, and saying, who needs practice? He got a round of golf in before yesterday, uh, before Monday's race. But on board with ARL, Circuit Zandvoort, we have 4.26 uh, kilometres of tarmac to navigate into the Tarzan hairpin. Slightly banked corner. You can carry a little bit more pace through. Up towards turn two. Flick it right, fifth gear for ARL, and then down to third or second for this banked hairpin left of turn three. You come out of that through four, which is flat. Five is a flat left-hander. Six is flat. And then the tricky corner of turn seven. Slightly late apex to get the line out. If you go a bit too wide, you could be in trouble. Turn eight, down a gear, flick it in. Back on the power as you then go down towards turn nine. Again, late apex, square the corner up to get the best exit. And then into this long open hairpin of turn 10. DRS open now down the, what's effectively like a back straight, I guess. As you hit the brakes for turn 11, 90 right, then long open hairpin left for turn 12. Good job by the Red Bull getting out of the way, as is the Ferrari. 13, down a gear, pop, not two gears, down only one gear, and then you're flat then all the way to the end, flat to this banked corner of 14. DRS open, um, 
Diaz Rover before 1014, ARL puts in a 110.762, which uh, undoubtedly will be beaten uh, because he's on the medium tyres, most of the others on the softs. What I don't understand here is Merckx has gone out on the intermediate tyres. I don't know whether he's just deciding he's going to have a bit of a, a challenge tonight or something. I'm not sure, but Destiny puts himself on pole position with a 108.978. Who else do we have? We've got Volcano on his way through. I think Learner Driver is uh, someone. I think it's Ash Tube just went up into fifth. Learner Driver on mediums are 109.266. Um, starting a lap. Really not quite sure what the strategy here is for, for Merck on this occasion. And got spooked goes quickest now with a 108.7. We got other. I think that might be Louis on his way. Cross the line for Louis. He puts himself in seventh, which is a, that's not a bad time. A 109.5. Maggot into seventh. Uh, that's Merckx. He's still on the uh, that intermediate compound. I don't think that's quite going to work for him. Ryan's just started a lap. Let's go on board with as we go through this lap. And uh, I believe I've just had the door open and close because uh, my good old co-commentator Bruce is back with us. So uh, good evening, Bruce. How are you? Uh, yeah, good evening, JP. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Um, punctuality never my strong point, but uh, luckily I've made it here just in time before it starts getting a bit tasty. Yeah, well, it's already getting tasty because Merck has decided he's going to burn a set of intermediate tyres on a dry on a on a dry circuit. Yeah, it's a tactic we've seen a few times this season from Merck, and uh, I also noticed I think it was in Tier Two last night. Uh, Lucas Blaha also did something similar, and um, I'm I mean I'm obviously Tier Three. I'm not used to these tactics. Uh, so if anyone does know why uh, why people do this, it'd be it'd be interesting to know because um, obviously it's really is just burning a set of tyres um, for the sake of it, really. Stinos goes second with Ryan in third. This is a good start for the Alpha Tauris in this qualifying session. One and three. I think everyone now probably on their way back to the pits. ARL, I think, is just doing laps at the moment on those mediums, trying to get used to it. The only downside to this for ARL is it means that those mediums are going to be unusable, really, for the race. Um... And this is a this is a circuit where safety cars will come out, and I just get that feeling. Having two sets of mediums going into the into the main race is quite an advantage, especially for strategy with the safety cars. Yeah, I mean, I wonder. I, I don't know if we've had any uh, weather reports, but but whether or not this is why maybe some people are using mediums is, is perhaps they are aware that maybe we'll do a bit of rain in the race, so they might not need the two sets anyway. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting if, if anyone is uh, in here could give us a, a bit of a weather forecast would be handy. But um, yeah, perhaps, you know, maybe a, a slight theory there on, on that and, and as to why so many are going around on mediums. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know ARL, obviously ARL returning to the Invictus Racing League scene. Um, he hasn't raced for a while, so I can understand ARL's sort of thought pattern on this is just getting used back used to these tyres and just getting laps in to get used to the game again. I mean, I mean, what this will probably mean is he will have a few, uh, probably an extra set of soft tyres compared to everyone else to use, which isn't necessarily a bad tactic either. So he might be in better shape than than maybe some of the others who have gone out on the mediums for a run. Absolutely, yeah. It'll practice all helps. Uh, Resco actually uh, on a fly lap there just boosts himself up to seventh. So. Um, yeah, an improvement of a good three seconds. He was only 1.2 up at the second split, so uh, I'm guessing he had a bad third sector on uh, on his original flying lap. But uh, yeah, good, good effort for Esker. He was a bit concerned going into tonight that he wouldn't have the pace, but um, it's a good start and it's a good time on the board to, to start the evening. Yeah, absolutely. And Merckx has now gone to the soft compound attire. We have a yellow flag, that's for... Volcano just making sure he's out of the way of those drivers behind him. Meanwhile, we've got Jack on a lap. 
in the Alpine. He is reserve driver, so uh, not scoring any team points for the Alpine team, but obviously scoring his own points. So he heads up through uh, four, five, and six, and into this tricky turn seven. Uh, both me and you have had good experiences of this corner. <laughs> yeah, not not necessarily good ones, and oh, and he's run wide there. He it was a bit of a messy start to the lap. To be fair to Jack, he um, had a big slide into what I believe is classes three and four on this uh, on this track. Uh, yeah, big big slide through three into four. Did well to hold it, but then obviously he's just run out of road there, uh, down into the uh, double right hander at the bottom of the hill. And um, yeah, big shame. But he's uh, he should have enough time hopefully to regain some uh, battery and, and have another attempt after this uh, this un enforced uh, outlap. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the line you ended up on it was like a, a, you know, a MotoGP and, and the bikes and we have their, their penalty laps, don't they, if they get penalties. It's almost like a penalty line for the F1 cars that was right around the strip of tarmac. So uh, yeah. We have seen that corner cause trouble for people this week as well. You know, people have... Um, made slight mistakes through it and run wide onto the grass and it's one of those ones if you can't get off the grass quick enough you then suddenly find you're in the gravel at the exit of the next corner as well so um yeah a tricky corner it seems quite innocuous when you come up to it but it is actually one of the, probably the more challenging corners on the circuit yeah it's also if you get if you hook up on the curb on the outside it kind of just drags you across doesn't it it's a really awkward um awkward corner if you get it wrong as volcano just coming through 13 and 14 now, 14 is an interesting corner. Obviously, the banked right hander is absolutely flat, but obviously, you have the DRS open all the way through it as Volcano goes quickest so far with a 108.6. Um, but we have seen in the past issues with people because of that DRS open and, and having the car unsettled through it. We have seen issues where people spin to the inside, hit the wall. It's own issues. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, on the, this more recent iteration of the game, it's it's been less of an issue. Uh, as learning driver there pops up with a 108.4, take provisional pole. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, with the older cars, there was a little bit less grip and it, and it was a, a very difficult corner. Um, we have seen incidents there over the last couple of nights, but I think primarily from cars going side by side with each other through that corner. Um, but yeah, again, another one to look out for. There's there's a few of them on this circuit, and uh, sometimes you know I, I feel that there's quite low grip round here normally. So sometimes it can catch you out when you least expect it as well. So he's Merck puts in the fastest time of the session, a 108.312. Not miles ahead of Learner Drive. There's not a lot of time for Learner Drive to to have to find there to claim that pole position, or at least challenge for it. So it's it's good to see. I see. Zanvo, very tricky, but because of because of its size and and the lap times, normally very very close in pace, which is what we always want to see. Yeah, absolutely. It does uh, it does give some good racing and, and some close times. And Stinos now up to third as well, really close to a front row there for the Mercedes driver. Um, massive improvement. Well, I say massive. It's a good few tenths improvement on his previous time. And uh, yeah, it it is tight, isn't it? Really, to be honest, you know, we're looking at. Only seven temps covering the top ten right now, so not a lot of gains to be made to make big positions. There's only in reality one and a half seconds for the whole field so far. Um, but as you say, there, like Stenos didn't have a lot of improvement on his time, but because of how close it is, the amount of positions he gained was was quite substantial in the end. Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah, as I said, it was only about three tenths, but it was a, it was a fair whack. As uh, ARL now on the soft tire pops up to eleventh with a one oh nine one, so yeah, the gap between the field is now down to one point two seconds. Um, I think Ash Tube and Louis probably got a little bit more in the tank than they've shown so far. So uh, fingers crossed they can uh, get themselves a little bit closer to the front as well. Um, but yeah, at the moment it looks like. Uh, ARL is obviously not on a lap because he's done his, and Stinos is also about to come in the pit. So we've uh, got a bit of a lull in proceedings as we head towards the last time that runs. Yeah, it's not surprising, obviously, because because of the short laps. Obviously, you don't need as much time to go out, get your out laps done. So expect a big rush around, probably three minutes or through between two to three minutes remaining. That's when the big rush of everyone coming out will be. 
Um, I've also heard from the weather minion Ryan uh, that there's 16% chance of rain for the race. So a chance, but from that, unlikely. Yeah, you'd have to feel that yeah, there's pretty much zero chance. As uh, ARL looks like he's going to go for another lap. So it looks like he's maybe recharged the battery. Um, question is, if this... Uh, he's got a chance to bail out and, and go again, I guess. If he if he doesn't feel this lap is worth finishing, he can come in the pits, get a new set on and, and get out again. But um, definitely saving got a lot of ERS. Because that, that okay, so his ERS keeps is flashing at the moment. Could be maybe a bit more practice then, perhaps, on the soft tyre for, uh, for the Alfa Romeo driver. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see, because with 15 cars trying to find space on the for the qualifying lap not going to be easy if they all go at the same time you've got louis and owen on eight laps now so uh yeah they're obviously feeling maybe that they don't want to get caught in traffic um they might well come across some on their flying lap but fingers crossed everyone can stay out the way of them yeah there's arl just nine thousandths down in sector two on his time so even though it seems like he's got a bit of a lack of battery it doesn't seem to be um hurting him too much which is quite surprising unless that 1091 was set without any ERS as he comes into the pits so he'll be in to grab another set of tyres and go out once again yeah maybe a, a small confidence booster there if maybe he felt that he could go quicker in that uh, second sector and obviously if he's if he's done so on a, a slightly more worn set of tyres he knows now he can you know, get a fresh set of boots on and make a significant difference to his current time. Um, you know, he's only got to make up four tenths of a second. He's suddenly in the top six. So it's, um, as we said before, it's not a lot of, uh, you know, not a lot of time to be made to actually get quite high up, as I think Louis is on his flying lap now. Yeah, and it was good uh, good stuff from the McLaren Learner driver there. He just hung in the, in the pit exit, waiting for Louis to come round that first corner to make sure he didn't impede so... Good thought process from the McLaren. Owen also on lap as well behind. We'll come back to him unless Bruce is going to be watching him for his lap. But Louis is nearly three tenths up on the first sector for the Ferrari. So this is good news for him. He'll be mixing it with the likes of Ginger Tiger Reshka. Currently he's a bit of a twitch though. Uh, that was through eight and up towards nine. Through the heaven of ten. Has that affected what gap he has to his current best time? Uh, no, it hasn't. He's now 0.38 up, so this time looking good for the Ferrari as he comes through turn 12, up towards 13 and 14 we go. DRS wide open up towards the line for the Ferrari. I think Owen's abandoned that, his current lap. And a 1.91 for Louis, puts him in 11th on the grid. Uh, yeah, Owen... Uh... Oh, big slides for Ginger Tiger there on his fly lap. Reska also abandoning his uh, initial attempt at a flying lap, so I think he's just recharging as well. So you're seeing for o Owen and uh, Owen and Reska doing that. Ginger Tiger continuing, but he's four tenths down on his best time, so and he has now pulled out of that as well. But I fear it may be too late um, regarding battery to make a difference now for another attempt. Yeah, so he. It's very small mistakes, obviously starting to creep in, but it does affect your lap time around here. As, uh, I think that is Owen. Ginger Tiger's just gone straight into the pit, so that's the end of his qualifying, I think. Because he won't get in and out in enough time. Yeah, definitely not what he was looking for there, Ginger Tiger. Um, been showing some good pace recently, and uh, yeah, disappointment for him there, I'm sure. But uh, obviously you don't score points for qualifying, so uh, still plenty of opportunity in the race. Well, let's go on board with our with one of the fan favourites of the session, which is Owen. Normally has a pretty good fan base following. He comes. He hasn't got. A, he's got a limited amount of ERS to to use on this lap. Um, but it, it will be the last chance he gets to set the lap. So up towards seven. Will he go up to seven before? No, he leaves it in sick. And just slings the car through eight and into nine and he's just run a little bit wide through nine caught the grass and uh, lit the rears up uh, Jack about to go about half a second quicker I think than his previous fast 
And there he goes, yeah, about four temps, four and a half temps, so up to fourth for Jack provisionally. That's a, a great effort from the Alpine driver. Reshko looks like he's about a tenth, uh, tenth up at the moment on his current time. Goes across the line, twelfth quickest for him, a 109.138. There's Ash Chubiak, Ash Chubiak coming across the line. He puts himself into seventh. And I think we've got a crash on circuit of Volcano. Yeah, just on board currently with ARL. Uh, oh, oh, I think ARL's done exactly the same thing. That is exactly where Volcano ended up, and I think ARL has done exactly the same thing as the uh, as the McLaren driver. Meanwhile, got spooked as having his own issues, and he's now been disqualified for driving the wrong way. Which is very harsh because he's just trying to turn the car around, but that means he's going to start at the back of the grid for this Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, that's out of turn um, 13, which is quite easy to do because of the curbing. If you take too much of the outside curbing, or clip the inside too much. Learn drives in. Stinos has nicked pole position in the midst of all this chaos. Uh, Stinos has taken pole position from his teammate. Yeah, apologies there to Stinos for not really <laughs> commentating on the fact that he just got pole. So yeah, fantastic effort from him. Uh, Merck was actually at one point about two tenths up on his on his best time, so I don't know what happened there to him. And uh, yeah, Luna driver back take very very early on his flying lap as well. So yeah, uh, but massive 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 disappointment there for Got Spook going from you know a top six on the grid to to last. So yeah, disappointment. Uh, Bruce, would you like to take us through the grid order for the Dutch Grand Prix? Absolutely. So, uh, sharing the front row of the grid is the Mercedes teammates of Stinos and Mert, with Lerner Driver third and Jack fourth, uh, Volcano fifth, with Maggot sixth, Ashtube seventh, and Owen eighth, with Destiny and Ryan ninth and tenth, uh, Louis and Reska eleventh and twelfth, ARL thirteenth, Ginger Tiger fourteenth, and Got Spooked a rather harsh fifteenth. But uh, yeah, plenty of work to, to do for, for the guys towards the back. But uh, as I said before, it's a, a longish race round here and uh, plenty of uh, opportunity to be had. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually asking about Owen. Uh, yes, um, Owen has been allowed to race tonight due to the timing of when he was notified of his penalty uh, from the previous round. So he is being allowed to race tonight, but he will serve that penalty in the in next week's race instead um, because it he, he got he got told about it about an hour unfortunately before the race so uh, he will be serving it it just will be next week instead of here yeah I think a, a fair decision there all round to be honest um, so yeah it's good to obviously to have Owen still here tonight obviously a disappointment that he won't be uh, racing next week but um yeah it keeps us up a nice healthy 15 for the evening doesn't it and uh yeah a decent a decent amount of people on the grid absolutely and uh, just a reminder for everyone watching uh we are straight into the race no formation app um that has been turned off for the season due to previous uh bugs and glitches with it so um once once we get going it's straight into the race no rest for, for me or bruce and I can assure you the first probably three laps we're not going to have any rest either. Yeah, it can prove quite hectic here to be uh, to be honest. Um, it's not been too bad this week generally in the other two tiers so far. I don't think that there's been a couple of bits of bumping here and there. Um, people have settled in quite well off the start, I think, if I remember correctly from both uh, both races so far. So hopefully the same here, but. Um, we did uh, we did notice in tier three that uh, once we have one safety car, they came at a fairly continuous rate. So hopefully not the same tonight. Yeah, is that the old saying, isn't it? Safety cars breed safety cars. And uh, very much something they're shown over in America with like IndyCar and um, it really doesn't happen so often in real life F1 as as much as you think. No, I think on uh, Monday night, I think. Um, he did so many laps. I think the safety car actually scored points. I think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a bit chaotic. Uh, and again, I think last night in tier two there was a few safety cars as well. Um, again, it was quiet at the start of the race, and then all of a sudden, once you had one, that was it. It was another and another and another. And um, 
Yes. Um, safety car restarts around here as well are a bit of an art as well as to when you go. It can be very easy to go too soon and get your throttle sort of um, pegged back a bit by the game. Uh, we've seen people go early, we've seen people go 30 yards from the line. So, yeah, we'll be interested if we get a safety car to see uh, how that is approached. Absolutely. We've had the notification from Mark to say that everyone can go. So we're less than 30 seconds away from starting this uh, Invictus Racing League Tier 1 race uh, in partnership with Venturi Studios. And Jack has unfortunately left the session. He's had a bit of issues there, so he's going to have to try and get back in. Um, which is not going to be ideal because his AI, uh, luckily it's ghosted, but we're going to have the five red lights and we are racing at Zandvoort for the Dutch Grand Prix. Who's got the best getaway? It looks like Stinos is going to clear, get clear into turn one. So it's Stinos followed by Merck Lerner driver, Volcano in fourth. We've got Jack Bottens. Oh, and we've got a collision behind Reska's round and he's out of the race. And we have a virtual safety car and we're barely two corners in. Maga has also retired now. He's spun to the inside of turn two, and that will bring out the safety car. Uh, yeah, that's a disastrous start for Reska. He, he got, I didn't see who, but he got a slight tag from behind, and then as everyone then slowed, he just kind of got pushed a bit more and more, and it was very little he could do about that, to be honest. And yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Maga. Obviously, he's just lost it to the right-hand side, whether he was helped or not, but we don't really know. But... Um, as a, yeah, disastrous start for the guys and after saying the last two nights have been pretty good at the start um, Tier 1 brings the safety car out almost immediately Yeah, I mean, I was just looking back on the stream and it looks like Resch has gone down the inside maybe had to just um, kind of hold up to make sure he doesn't cause it, doesn't have any contact with the, the car he's racing with and maybe gets tagged from behind and then spins to the inside Maggot, meanwhile, I I get this funny feeling for Maggot that he maybe clipped the inside curb at turn three. Um, turn three, turn two, sorry. Um, and we know how difficult that curb can be, and it's just brought the rear end round and, and into the wall he goes, but we're down to 13 after two corners. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Destiny now in the pits, as well. I assume probably from front wing there were a few bits of front wing flying as everyone Constantine. Uh, this is a, a bit of a blessing, in, not even in disguise for Jack, as he now, I believe, he has now got control of his car. So, yeah, he's not lost too much out of that. And, um, yeah, he's now up against his uh, adversary from last week, Owen. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how those two have their battle. But uh, what this will also do is give us a chance to actually sort out our um, screen. So let's have a look. Stinos has started that. So that's why Stinos got such a good launch. He started on the softs along with Got Spooked. Uh, hard runners are Volcano and Louis. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the field started on mediums. I think Destiny also started on mediums. So everyone else, including Maga and Reshka, all, all started on the medium tyre. Uh, as you see, the possible race strategies below you, um, soft to medium, medium to soft, or medium and hard. Uh, but you get the feeling if we get more safety cars, this is going to turn into more like a two or three stop race where people are going to try and take advantage of fresh rubber. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, this is way too early to take advantage of the safety car. But um, oh, and Jack, uh, Jack has spun it under safety car. I was on board with him and. Um... Yeah, it was slow through the corner, and then as he went for the throttle coming out, it just swapped in. So he's now uh, dropped from fourth on the grid down to 13th. So that's a bit of a disaster, and he's clumsily hitting curbs here under safety car. He's, uh, uh, yeah, a bit risky this, and uh, yes. Anyway, um, as we were saying, strategies, they, they, we've seen a mix all week, to be honest, in, in all different... Um, in all the different lobbies we've seen uh soft to medium soft to hard uh medium to hard um i think even a soft medium medium soft hard possibly at one point so uh yeah it'll be interesting to see how safety cars do affect people's thinking towards these uh, strategies yeah absolutely I mean, one thing for jack then on his recovery was uh, it's a pretty frowned upon is that he kind of just threw it in reverse and chucked it across the circuit even though he is ghosted 
uh, it's pretty frowned upon to, to be doing that, especially when there are cars still coming past you, so um, you might get away with it, but uh, who knows. We've got a 2x2 two two situation at the front now, anyway, with two Mercs and two McLarens. Uh, I'm assuming probably the safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap as everyone is now bunched up together. Um, I'll be interested to see how Stinos uh, attacks this. Obviously, he doesn't really want to leave his teammate in the lurch, but he's also going to want to get on with it and, and make advantage of those soft tyres as much as he possibly can in the early stages. Yeah, uh, and this is the thing. I think for the Mercedes, they've got a fairly commanding lead at the moment in the constructors so for them this, this has got to be a no team order if Stinos wants to win it he can fight for that for this win um, so it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out I mean for all we know we could see like old school Merckx and Emir tactics of these two working together to break that DRS of the McLarens um, and try and settle it out later in the race, but uh, let's see where Stinos is going to go. We're still cruising through 14. So it's just controlling the pace. When does he go? Does he go the end of this end of the corner? Or will he go at the start finish line? He goes now, just on the exit of turn 14, and he's a good launch, four tenths to the good. Um, meanwhile, Volcano looking to the inside of his teammates or possibly defending from Ashtube, who's going to try to go around the outside of the Tarzan hairpin. He's kept it. Are we going to go three wide? Oh, Owen thinks better, right? probably the wise idea. But Ashtube makes it around the outside of turn two, through three, and the banked hairpin. Owen looking for a good traction out of it. He has got it. Has he got alongside? Yes, he has. We're going to go side by side, through four, five, up through six. Owen, once again, can't quite complete it in time. But he's going to have a good run through seven. He's on the inside for eight. Not quite enough. Although a little bit wide from Volcano. He's gone very wide down the escape road. And uh, that's a huge amount of positions lost. Big switch from the Alpine in the background along with uh, someone else, I think, as Volcano is rejoining. A bit of chaos. I mean, we don't mind it too much. But uh, obviously the driver's fighting hard as that's Ginger Tiger down the inside of Louis. Louis trying to fight back for 8th place, just about keeping it, and the problem for Ginger, he's got Destiny behind him. And alongside him, we've got three compounds in a row. Through turn 14, and everyone just decides to settle out as I say that. It looks like Jack's about to go for a move on Volcano down the main straight. How much, how far can he get alongside? He's going to just let it go. Down. Oh, we got a collision, that's Ginger Tiger round. Across the front of uh, Destiny, I believe, and we have a yellow flag for the stricken Aston Mine. He has got going again. We remain uh, racing without further safety car. Uh, Owen, absolutely now stuck to the back of that Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, Ginger Tiger did seem to be helped along his way there a little bit with that one. There was a, a small amount of contact between the uh, two Alfa Tauris of Ryan and got spooked uh, at this particular corner now on the previous lap and uh, got spooked got quite sideways oh, Owen's and, gone round. and a crash Owen is out of the race he's lit the rears that we and he's gonna bring out the second safety car he just lit the rears up out of that turn 10 hairpin and uh, as they say that was curtains yeah, it's, uh, again, that corner has been a tricky one this week in the race. The, the grip level around the circuit is insanely low, and that has been one of the, the, the points that we've seen spins this week. Um, um, we have so, yeah. pit people in the pits. Stinos has come into the pits from the soft tyres. He's going to go to hards. Des uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I think Destiny's picked that up in the pit lane because there is a... A thing with, with this pit lane where you can pick up track limit penalties uh, very harshly. But it's interesting that Stinos has decided to go for the hard tyres now. I can understand why, but the way this race is going, you feel there's at least another safety car in this, and uh, he probably could have stayed on those soft tyres a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're already down now to the, to the case that as long as you finish this race, you're going to get a point. So uh, Jack comes out onto the soft tyres. An interesting strategy. Um, whether this is an attempt to get up through the order as, as much as he can. Um, yeah, Stinos pitting for the, the hards, it's 
he obviously maybe feels he can go to the end on those tyres, but I, I think it'll be hard work to be honest doing doing this amount of laps on them. I, I think they'll make it, um, but it's just just what sort of pace they're they're giving him towards the end. Um, I'd say he probably within a couple of laps will be on a par pace wise with the with the guys in front on the the five lap old mediums. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. But uh, yeah, disaster for Owen obviously after that uh, reprieve and being able to race uh, tonight now after that DNF's um, a bit of a disaster for the uh, Aston Martin driver Um, but uh, yeah there we go there's a bit of drama already we're only six laps in only six laps in two safety cars so far and just word from the pit lane it seems like Owen adjusted his pedals again before the race and his acceleration was quite inconsistent so which would make sense with the tyre suddenly lighting up on you if you, you're you not quite used to how consistent the, the new pedal settings are yeah it was a strange I mean it was obviously as I said that corner has been a bit tricky all week so far but um, I would say he was quite a fair bit out of the corner before it suddenly snapped on him um, from what I can see from the onboard of uh, I think it was Ryan I was on board with at the time so um yeah, big shame, big, big shame. But, um, yeah, Merck's now in his familiar first position. Um, but, yeah, perhaps with uh, Stinos potentially, with a... Uh, and Ginger Tiger as well. I'm not forgetting he's obviously now on the hard tyres. Uh, t- potentially with a pit stop in hand. Yeah, and you have to think that the likes of maybe Got Spooked and Volcano as well could be in this mix. Because if we're thinking that maybe Stinos and Junior Tiger, they're, they're going to have to pit again. Um, they're obviously hoping they can stick with the front pack, um, maybe be right on them so that they can maybe have that pit stop availability to them. Um, and you have to feel that maybe like Got Spooked and Volcano will be in, in that similar sort of um, area because they've gone to the medium tyres, they just have to make one more pit stop for the race. Yeah, I mean, the, the only other thing that could benefit Stinos and Ginger Tiger here is uh, if they can go long these hards now for a safety car free for a while, if they can go long and then we get another safety car or a virtual safety car towards the end of the race, that they can then strap on some soft tyres for the last sort of 10 laps or so. Um, you know, the, the fact they'll get a cheaper pit stop could then still put them in a good track position. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see um, what they uh, what they do from this, this position. Yeah, we're on board then with the lead car. It's a similar view. In fact, it's a Mercedes, but it's the other Mercedes are marked this time. And it'll be interesting to see the difference of restart. And that's the difference of procedure. Middle of the corner through turn 14 and six tenths of a second to the good until Learner Driver puts on that ERS. Down towards the tires and hairpin we go. And we've got a little bit of movement. We've got uh, Stinos round the outside of ARL. Lovely move through tar- through the Tarzan hairpin. Uh, looks like Jack and Ginger Tiger side by side, and Volcano hasn't had the star he wanted. He's uh, lost a few places. He's now down to uh, 11th as Jack goes around the outside of turn three uh, through the sweeping S's. And uh, looks like uh, ARL has company in the form of Got Spooked. Obviously, those guys on the fresh tyres. Destiny picks up, I believe that's a second set of three second time penalties, so he's up to six. Uh, nearly uh, a second per lap he's managed to gain there, which is quite an impressive stat. Still, I was looking at the back of the Ferrari of Louis. I think he's going to want to get rid of him quite quickly. Got spooked side by side with ARL out of 10, down towards 11. Still, side by side. Oh, contact. we got a crash. we got a crash at the back as well there. Destiny and ARL. Uh, I think that might have been a reset to track though unfortunately for yes that was for Destiny yeah so that's uh, again another very frowned upon thing and it looks like Ginger Tiger is, has let ARL go either that or Ginger Tiger's got a heavy, heavy bit of front wing damage yeah I think he unfortunately was a bit of an innocent uh, victim in that it's 5 second penalty for Ginger Tiger as well for that screams uh, retirement potentially but he's still continuing on with it so maybe just a bit of frustration but yeah a, a ginger tiger complete innocent party in that he just had nowhere to go and unfortunately lost an end plate and um yeah that's him to the back of the pack 
So lap nine we are on and Lerner Driver has stuck with the Mercedes of Merckx. This is good news for him, especially with DRS about to come back online. Um, that's exactly what he's doing. Jin Tiger is going to continue, which is great to see. Obviously, points on offer here as long as you finish. So it's good to see him continuing around. He's gone to a set of soft tyres. Meanwhile, Stinos continuing his charge. He's crept up to the back of Ryan. This will be for fourth place. Looks like a fairly standard move down towards the Tarzan hairpin. Uh, yeah, th this is going well for Stinos. He's not really dropping that much time to the guys at the front. Obviously, he's a, a couple of seconds behind, but that's for, from making his way through the traffic. So, uh, yeah, he'll be pleased with this at the moment with, with the fact that he knows that the guys at, right at the front there still have to pit. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he's doing an excellent job on these tyres now. Um, Louis also, he's having a strong race at the moment, up in seven so far. Well, fingers crossed he can keep this going. Oh, that's, oh, that's very, very close through turn seven. Volcano and Jack going side by side, still side by side through eight. They go, Jack just about holding on for eighth place. Good respect given from both drivers. Expect the Alpha Tarries to maybe swap positions. Here comes Sinos to the inside of uh, Ashtube, and there is the switch for the Alpha Tarries. Makes sense, good teamwork from those two. Got spooked on those fresh tyres. Definitely going to be the quicker of the two for now. Yeah, absolutely, and he's going to want to keep up with Stinos really and, and progress through the field at, at the same rate the Mercedes driver is, but uh, yeah, he's not going to get Ashtube up to the up to turn one right now. Ashtube actually looking to have a go back at Stinos, but uh, not quite enough space there. It looks like Volcano and Jack still having a bit of a battle, and Volcano is back in front. Yeah, courtesy of some DRS help, Volcano up into eighth place. They're trying to chase down the Ferrari of Louis. And this is where Stinos, uh, this is where this progress now starts to kind of halt a little bit because I get the feeling that he's probably burnt a lot of VRS to get through the field that quickly, and he doesn't have any. D the likes of learner driver ahead of him so this is going to be the, the toughest part of the test is can he close in on those top two um, without that drs8 absolutely with the learner drivers obviously gonna get that drs so i think the key here is to maybe not necessarily keep an eye on the gap between learner between the stinos and learner driver but also the, the gap between Merck and stinos to see how that goes because obviously they'll both be running with um, very little DRS or none at all. Um, but I mean, Stinos is taking a few temps on this lap out of Learner Driver, so he's uh, he's going all right. But yeah, it does look there with a the DRS, he's lost those few temps almost immediately Ooh. down that straight. Spooked almost into the back of uh, Ashtube, but he does get alongside on the second half of the tyres on hairpin, side by side, very close racing. But uh, they're getting through cleanly, and that's a lovely switch back from the Alpha Tarry if he can get the drive out of the corner. Still there alongside Ashtube. This is this is not a place you normally go side by side, but we've seen it before. We're going to see it again, and Gotspook just about gets uh, the door closed and squeezed on in there. Absolute fair game though from Ashtube. There's some some great driving from these two. Uh, this is going to help Stinos though, because it means it's going to release the pressure from him, because Ashtube did used to have DRS. Gotspook is now going to have it down towards turn 11. So on the outside, a little bit of contact, but they both get away with it, and uh, got spooked up into fourth place. But will Ashtu be able to respond on the main straight with DRS? It looks like too much of a gap now to uh, really close in, but you never know with this main straight. Yeah, well, got spooked is actually flashing now. He's run out of DRS, and, and here comes the Alfa Romeo. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. Uh, although trying to still, still stick it around the outside is got spooked. I feel he's going to have to let this one go though for a second and uh, yeah indeed uh, Ashley makes it back up to fourth place uh, so yeah fantastic race and a little bit of uh, wheel on pod action but um, yeah they both did great there to, to avoid any serious contact. And there's still nose to tail going up towards turn seven. We also have to look at Louis and Ryan though because those two are, are close in combat as well. Got to speak just 
you makes you wonder for got spooked he's probably better off maybe not going for the move into turn 11 and try and use the the grip of the tires out of the last couple of corners and use that drs zone instead um, because um, then he's yeah, got a lap to build the gap yeah i think you're probably right i mean he's made the move now so it'll be interesting to see what he can do on these, these next uh, well this really is the last corner because the last corner is flat out so uh, I think he's got a big enough gap this time now. I'd probably suggest. Uh, I don't know, actually. I think there's still enough time here for Ashtube to get this done. Here comes the Alfa Romeo. He looks to the inside. He's alongside. Got Spook tries to spook him out of it, but he doesn't. I think this time, though, Got Spook should have good traction out of the tyres on hairpin. Yes, and now he, he'll have a lap to build that gap. And uh, hopefully, run clear. Stinos now, three and a half tenths behind Learn Driver. Learn Driver, I don't know what's happened to him but I don't know if he's made a few mistakes along the way but he now has a very quick Mercedes behind him uh, yeah I think the driver just ever so slightly dipped outside the DRS uh, one second so uh, I think he's now then struggling to keep up with Merck in front at quite the same rate he was before um, so yeah still us now within striking distance uh, and interestingly I think the distance the, the difference between uh, uh, Stinos backs off actually into the couple of corners here I think to maybe make the move into turn one which is some smart race uh, sense there from the Mercedes driver but yeah the, the gap between Stinos and Merck is, is pretty stable around two and a half seconds at the moment so good pace at the moment from uh, from Stinos. You get the sense Stinos is about to take about three tenths down this main straight with the DRS on his teammate into turn one Lerner driver going to try and hang it around the outside mm. But that's not quite going to work. And Ryan, down the inside of Louis, who's gone really wide through turn number one. Allows Volcano through, so down to eighth for the Ferrari. But he is on those hard tyres, and he's been on them for 14 laps. So um, whilst the tyres are probably still OK tyre wear-wise, you do get the sense that those hards are probably starting to suffer. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think a uh, little bit of contact actually in the braking zone between the Ferrari and the Alfa Tauri there. Uh, it caused Louis to run a little bit deep and obviously Volcano's managed to make the move, but now Volcano is all over the back of Ryan. So, yeah, an excellent battle between these guys and I think they may be slowly creeping up on the back of Ash Tube as well. Yeah, Volcano there. He's going to have DRS and again, he'll stick behind the Alfa Tauri for now. And look for a move into turn one. And Stinos is starting to close that gap to Merckt. He's got just under a second to learn driver, so he's, he's safe down the main straight now in terms of uh, the DRS. Volcano. Here comes Volcano to the inside of Ryan, and Ryan not putting up much of a fight. That's kind of not his battle right now, especially since he uh, he hasn't he's yet to pit. Yeah, interesting now, we're really, we are in that sort of pit window to, to switch to hards if the guys on mediums want to. It's whether or not they'll want to go from the mediums to the hards or, or try and stick it out for a bit and go medium to soft. So this is obviously where the strategies are going to start playing out now. But I mean, Stinos will be delighted here. He, he's got Merck in front, he can see him. Uh, he knows that Merck is got a pit again, but the only difference is Merck will have a tyre advantage on Stinos when he does make that pit stop so um, it will then be a case of whether Stinos can you know stick it out on the hard tyres to the end of the race and, and hold the gap or whether or not he comes in himself to go get on faster tyres than Merck at the end of the race as well but obviously there will be a point where that decision has to be made and once you've gone past that point you, you're sort of set in then you can't really change your mind so we'll be interested to see how the uh, how Stinos approaches this um, going forward. Yeah, I wouldn't suppose as we watch Volcano slowly creeping up behind the Alfa Romeo, decide not quite close enough for a lunge into turn one. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if Stinos kind of waits for Merck to pit here. Um, because we're getting quite close to the halfway point, which the medium tyres will probably do 18 laps. Um, and it makes you wonder if Stinos is now thinking, right, I'll wait for Merck to come in for his pit stop. And then I'll come in the lap afterwards and hope that maybe Merck's on, like maybe the hard tyre, Stinos on a second set of mediums. And then he can use that medium tyre advantage to the oh, end of the race. 
big spin for Destiny, uh, right in front of his teammate Jet, but uh, managed to avoid each other and Aeros driven through the ghost of Destiny there, but I don't think he really had much choice because Destiny was pretty much on the race in nine, but uh, yeah, huge spin, just touched the grass there on the exit of the right-hander and, and went round, but um, yeah, Stinos, uh, yeah, that is a good, that is one potential strategy is to pit the lap after and be on a quicker set of tyres than Merck. Um, the only problem with that comes is if Mert comes in for softs, um, would Stenos fancy his chances of keeping up with him on the same tyre? That is the that is the only question, isn't it? Um, but Volcano gets past Ash Tube. That's for fifth place. He's back in the top five. He's running well. His Volcano. He's um, obviously he's taking a little bit more time to get back through the pack, but. He has gradually made his way up there, and if we do get any more carnage at all that involves Burnt Mylander, he's in a really good position right now to, to take advantage of that uh, for the remainder of the race. The learner driver is just about staying within a second of Stinos, uh, whilst Destiny is now trying to recover uh, ninth place from ARL. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Destiny obviously has a, a bit of a disaster. I, I believe he's on uh, six seconds at the moment. I think let's just check. Yeah, six seconds for Destiny, by for Ginger Tiger at the moment. So, um, yeah, a bit of a bit of work to do for Destiny. He's had a bit a, a bit of an eventful race so far, and it's a shame because we know he's got the pace to be up near the front. But uh, yeah, just um, having a bit of an inconsistent race so far tonight. The lead gap down to one point five seconds. So Stinos edging closer and closer. Destiny decides it's time for some new tyres. And unfortunately, he's going to get bulked up by his teammate because Jack's also come into the pits. Yeah, I'm not sure they were chatting to each other on that one. Uh, interesting team tactics from the uh, Alpine team. But uh, yeah, Destiny onto hard tyres. Uh, Jack now onto the medium. So he's feeling he could do the 18 laps now on the mediums uh, to the end of the race. Um, so yeah, this will be a good guide now, really. Um, although, to be honest, it would be too late for it to be a good guide because it'll be the end of the race once everyone knows. But uh, yeah, um, 18 laps, he can do it. Obviously, Learner Drive is on 18 laps, Merck's on 18 laps, and that's with a higher uh, fuel load at the start of the race. So yeah, it shouldn't be too much of an issue for the Alpine driver to get to the end. Yeah, I mean, Merck's 18 laps does come with about four laps of safety car to go with it which has helped him a little bit on, on that one. But if he goes to like 22 laps, then yeah, absolutely 18 laps should be a pretty much a breeze for the Alpine. We've got Spooked is in the pits now. So yeah, we'll be interested to see what he switches to for these last uh, 17 laps. Um, and it looks like another set of medium tyres. So Which oh. makes sense. Yeah, I think Got Spook started on. I think Got Spook started on. I can't remember now, but I think uh, uh, soft. Soft, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, two stop strategy for the Alpha Terry driver, and uh, yeah, I mean he's going to be on a quick tire now um, compared to the guys in front of him. Um, so he's going to get a bit of an undercut, hopefully on a couple. But uh, yeah, this is it's starting to get a bit spread out. But uh, still, Ash Tube chasing down Volcano at the moment. As we head through this part of the lap, Ashtu is interesting. Ashtu probably burning up a lot of ERS here, but he's keeping with Volcano, which is quite impressive. But it's also quite an important thing for him to do this because um, he's getting that DRS assistance, and this is going to help his, his race later on. Um, we all know if you lose that DRS, then you're in a bit of a world of pain in terms of losing time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as he's nine tenths down, going onto this, onto this pit straight, he's coming out of it for half, half a second. So yeah, he gained four tenths per second just by sticking on that DRS, and that's four tenths of a second of lap time that he's gaining on people that aren't in DRS right now. So yeah, it is it is a very important tool to use around this circuit. Um, uh, he does look like he's starting to struggle on those twenty lap old mediums, but he's still sticking roughly with Volcano, although he is perilously close to dropping out of that DRS yeah it's I think I get the feeling that maybe Volcano probably have a little bit more ERS compared to Ashtube because I think Ashtube is purely trying to use that ERS to keep himself in the DRS 
And that sounded like a moment. Uh, yeah, uh, Jin's like had a slight moment out of one, and uh, then Destiny's run into the back of him uh, into three and four. Ooh. They're very side by side right now. Ginger Tiger does not have a lot of grip. There's a lot of wheel banging going on here at the moment. Um, yeah, Ginger Tiger is running out of grip on those soft tyres. And uh, yeah, he's very under threat from Destiny, who's just gone to oh. throw it down the inside. And uh, yeah, I don't need to say much about that one. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a pretty slam dunk. Steward's visit for, for Destiny, I feel. Yeah, Ashtube still one point. He's one point one down. I think he did get out of the DRS, but he's still not that far behind. Um, you'd have to think anyone who's now on twenty one laps is going to be going onto the soft tire for the final stint. And I, I think Stinos, if he was to now come in, if he was to follow Merck onto that, I, I think it would be Merck's race to lose. So Stinos has to do something different here, and I, I think that something different is going to be sticking out on the hards. And you know, maybe coming in softs, you know, maybe with about seven or eight laps to go, uh, and see if he can take that time back out of Merck. It depends what softs he's got left because I mean, he started on that soft compounded Stinos. And, and Merck's if... in. Merck is in. Unless Stinos has gone for a softer tyre compound balance, which gives him four sets of softs for the qualifying. He's not going to have a, a spare set of fresh softs to use. Yeah, that is true. I guess, yeah, he could be limited on what he can do. Uh, Ashtube uh, sticking out on his 22 lab old softs, right, uh, mediums right now, sorry. So, um, Merck not too far behind him. Can Merck get out in front of the Alpha Tari? He does indeed. So, clean air for Merck, and, and that's exactly what you need. A nice seven second gap to Ashtube in front, and you can start laying down some lap timers now to try and uh, catch the guys in front. Yeah, I think that also shows a little bit the uh, the undercut power around here because Got Spooked, uh, in reality, doesn't really have much business being near Mertz um, during the course of this race. But he's come out right right behind him. Now the question is, what's going to happen at the front? Um, because Stinos, I mean, Learner Driver has been a little bit hard done by. He's going to have to get through the traffic. But what does Stinos do? Stinos stays out, so you have to feel, unless he comes in on the next lap, he's going to have to now commit to go into the end. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, as Volcano comes in the pits, I, I think Stinos is going to have to try and do that, to be honest, um, to try and get the most out of this. But yeah, got spooked really now. He's put himself, uh, as he as a fastest lap now, got spooked. He's put himself into a great position to get a podium at this. He's going to have Luna Driver chasing him down pretty hard. Um, but if he can keep hold, of, keep hold of that position, eventually those softs are going to be a struggle compared to those medium tyres. And uh, he could be could be on for a podium. Yeah, you get the sense that Merck's going to try and burn a bit of battery here to get away from... Uh, get away from Spooked here. Because the problem is that Spook could re if Spook gets close enough to Merck, he could throw a bit of a spanner in the works for that Mercedes driver. They start to battle and lose time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just looking back now. Ginger Tiger has unfortunately been lapped by Stinos. He'll be hoping Stinos does come in the pit. So if there is a safety car, he can um, he can get back onto the lead lap I mean at the moment if there is a safety car I'd fully expect Sinos to then come in and pit for soft tyres uh, from this point onwards uh, but obviously you know he, it would probably just about keep him in the lead I think as Ashtube pits out of uh, second place a five second penalty for the Alfa Romeo yeah just bring it a little bit too quick as Lerner Driver now puts in the fastest lap of the race um I did, uh, I'll change that back to the interval. So 12.7 seconds, that's the gap at the front. And you get the sense that's going to come down very quickly. There's a le well, 12 laps left in the race. A second a lap is what Merck needs. And that's just to get on the back of his teammate. Check on the back of Volcano, but Volcano on those fresh soft tyres. Yeah, 
It's been interesting to see how this plays out now between Merckx and Sinos. Obviously, Merckx, you'd have to feel he's going to catch him as we've got a yellow flag, and that is Destiny, Destiny. who's off the road again. Uh, tough race for the Alpine at the moment. This is probably the third or fourth time we've seen him facing the wrong way, I think. So, yeah, not quite going to plan uh, for Destiny tonight. I've got the lap time uh, telemetry up at the moment. I'm pretty certain I just saw Sinos put in a 113 and Merck put in a 110. I, I believe I just, I just saw, but we'll, we'll have a look on the next round of the circuit. But if that's the case, it's not going to be very long before Merck's on the back of Stinos. And to be honest, even now, Stinos is in a little bit of trouble because it's not... Ex whilst the pit lane itself is quite short, because of the speed, you still lose a normal amount of time as Destiny is retired in the pit lane. Which I don't understand because he was on for points as a minimum. That is true, um, depending on how the stewards would have looked at the reset earlier. But uh, yeah, he's obviously had enough. He's, he's had a hard night as Volcano looks down the inside of Ryan uh, to take fifth place. That is the 11 90 degree right hander. Will be Ryan gets DRS though onto the main straight. Learner driver now on the tail of Got Spooked. Not close enough, plus there's that yellow flag for the retiring uh, Alpine at the moment, which is going to cause havoc here for Ryan, although he goes green just as he pulls back into light. Yeah, interesting parking from the uh, the Ghost of Destiny there, just sort of abandoning the car on the exit of the pit lane. But uh, yeah, a learner driver all over got spooked. Uh, you'd expect this with being on those pretty decent soft tyres right now. But uh, Gottsmoot looks like he's uh, defending with a bit of uh, smartness here at the moment. But it's uh, whether he can hold him off on the DRS straight, I think, is going to be pretty tricky. Yes, it's uh, not going to be easy for the Alpha Towery. Go through turn 12. Let's go and look at Stinos. What time does Stinos set here? Still sets a 1 minute 12.6. What is Merckx going to do? 1.12.6 to beat. He puts in a 1 minute 11.3. 1.3 seconds. As there goes Learner Driver past the Alpha Tauri. So Merckx is closing in just about at enough of a rate to get onto the back of Stinos and have a go on the last lap of the moment. Yes, it, it's going to be tight. I mean, like, like I said, I think those, those soft tyres are going to be pretty difficult. And I think Jack just, or Jack and Ryan side by side, actually, sorry, and Ryan there in sixth place managed to, I think, keep ahead of the Alpine. Uh, it was a very close battle between these two guys, and Louis is really, really close to Ash Tube as well. But, um, yeah, got spooked now. All he can do, really, is, is, is stick to the back of the learner driver, see if he can poach third towards the end of the race, and... Um, yeah, set up. I think I think Stinos now he has to go to the end of this race on his hard tyres. I think that's going to be his mindset. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he can actually hold off Merck till the end of the race. Lap 29 of the race. 7.6 seconds is the gap. Jack on the back of Ryan. He's going to get DRS. Down the main straight to the inside. Pretty regulation overtake. And the Alpha Tower down to seventh. The Alpine up to sixth. Yeah, good stuff for Jack there. As you say, a pretty uh, standard overtake with the DRS there. It's a good result for Jack so far. He's on a good race after the slight issues earlier with the, the, the disconnect and everything. He's got back in and he's uh, doing some good laps right now. And uh, you'll fancy that he'll probably have a good chance of staying ahead of Ryan now to the end of the race on those medium tyres. Uh, the gap between Merck and Stills is kind of stalled a little bit it's not really coming down at that much of a rate so um yeah Merck is obviously going to be pushing really hard right now to try and close that gap but it's not coming down a huge amount right now so 
Oh, a ginger tiger just staying out of the way of those coming through to lap him. Interestingly though, Ryan has managed to stick with Jack here. And he's going to have the opportunity to re-overtake him, whilst Ashtu behind is catching them. Jack going extremely defensive down the main straight to the outside for Ryan. Not quite going to work on this occasion. Does try a small switch back, but again, probably not enough grip on those hard tyres at the moment to make that work. No, a great racing and an excellent defending from Jack there. There's textbook stuff there sticking all the way to the right and then getting back across to, to take the best race in line he possibly could for two and one. So, yeah, brilliant stuff from the Alpine driver. Uh, but Ryan, yeah, he is actually looking quite dangerous now, I have to say, and I think Jack will fancy his chances. Um, Ryan's doing an excellent job of sticking with him, but Ashtube is about to join the party as well. Yeah, Ashtube's done very nicely, considering he had the last of the pitters. And he's eyeing up a potential top six finish here. Yeah, he does have a five second penalty to, to try and eke out on these guys. Uh, in front may be a bit too much of an ask, but uh, yeah, we'll see if he can get past, see what he can do from there. But yeah, Ryan with the DRS open, can he get past Jack? Jack's going to go defensive again. Ryan to the inside. Nicely done from the Alpha Tauri. And we're on board with the Alpha Romeo. We've got a line of A's the Alpha Tauri, the Alpine, the Alpha Romeo. Ashtu just had a little bit of a twitch, I think, through three, which is meant he's not right on the back of those two ahead of him. And as you said earlier, Bruce, that gap at the front has stalled a little bit, down now at six seconds. It just looks like Merck can't quite get any closer. Down the inside goes Ashtu. That's an opportunistic move. Jack does get a slight switch back on him, but he's going to be on the outside for turn 10. And the Alfa Romeo completes that move. Very opportunistic, not normally an overtaking spot that one, but when you've got that much grip, you can pretty much overtake anywhere. Yeah, sneaky stuff there from Ashtu, but absolutely brilliant. Really, really good uh, overtaking and good racecraft there to, to send it down the inside, but also to a position where he knew he wouldn't really make contact with Jack as well. And he's got DRS now on Ryan. If he can get past Ryan, we could maybe see him try and eke out that five seconds that he needs to in these four laps that are left yeah he's gonna have to get that one second gap in order to stand a chance i think if he doesn't get out of that drs uh challenge in the next two laps he won't get five seconds up the road so this is quite a crucial couple of laps for the alfa romeo if he wants to keep this sixth place yeah, absolutely. He's uh, any uh, attempts so far, and he, he is uh, flushing somewhat right now. So, um, yeah, he's not going to be at a DRS on this bit. It's what traction he can get out the next couple of corners, though, whether it's enough. But I, I think, yeah, he's actually going to struggle um, to get out, to, to break that DRS. I mean, his only hope here really is that Jack and Ryan slow each other up, giving him a chance to, to escape. But I think Louis is starting to catch this pack of three as well at the moment. So down the main street we go once again. 33. Well, the 33rd lap as Ryan looks to the inside of Ashtube. Can't quite make that one work. Although he has still got that wheel almost alongside. Just, and then goes in line for turn two. Merck's, Merck's uh, challenge has definitely stalled now at the front. Um, so is that a case of the soft tyres now crying and saying they've had enough? And could this also be an opportunity for Got Spooked here, especially if Learner Driver's tyres are now also crying, for maybe Spooked to get back into that podium spot? Yeah, potentially. He's he's still only a couple of seconds, two and a half seconds behind the McLaren. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's got a chance, but uh, it's not going to be easy. And, um, yeah, he's obviously going to want to get this down to about 1.6 at the end of this next lap to give himself the best chance possible into the last couple of laps. But, uh, 
yeah, it will be interesting to see Ryan uh, right up behind Ashtube again, Jack there as well, and as I said, Louis is slowly catching these three guys in front, so could be a four-car battle for six very, very soon. Side by side through turn one once again, Ashtube defending that sixth place. Still side by side, Ryan who keeps the door open, a bit of contact between him and the Alpine. Just about both parties getting away with that one. And amazingly, they're still only half a second behind Ashtube. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah, some interesting racing, uh, some, a little bit of argy-bargy in there. Uh, as I say, this has just left it open for Louis, who's now in the DRS of the car in front. Uh, he's watching this, waiting for something to happen, I think, at the moment in this Ferrari. Yeah, you can see an incident coming up as we come in later and later into this race. Stinos onto the penultimate lap of the race. Merck's got it down to 3.8 seconds. But still not enough time at the moment for him to make that challenge. It's a little bit of a twitch, though, from Ryan. I don't know if he's don't think he's got DRS here comes Jack to the inside Ryan immediately into the slipstream to limit the damage to Louis who also has DRS and uh, is on those medium compound of tyre it's a difficult situation really for the guys behind last year because in a normal racing situation if it was just you and him on a track you'd be thinking well that's okay as long as i stay within five seconds and it's not an issue but obviously with the ryan and louis sort of sniffing you know sn sniffing their positions as well um it's it's difficult because you can't do that you can't relax you have to still push on at a fair rate and get involved with the alfa romeo even though he has that penalty yeah, uh, if you can get past the Alfa Romeo, give yourself a bit of a buffer. Uh, that's always the best thing, because then someone's got to fight with someone that really they don't want to be fighting with, just to try and get up to, to yourself. So you can very much often use cars with penalties to, to your advantage, but at the same time, they can be a, a big disadvantage, as Jack now looks to be lining up a DRS overtake. And here comes Louis, one way to the inside of turn one. A little bit of contact on entry, but uh, Louis gets through up into eighth place. Yeah, I think he signaled his intentions early enough, there, to be honest. And uh, yeah, good move there from the Ferrari driver. It's now whether or not he can catch uh, Jack for sixth. I think he may be slightly too far behind after having to take that move. But uh, yeah, Stinos, one and a half seconds up just one sector to go I think he is going to do this as long as he can hold it through this penultimate corner yeah we haven't seen a lot of him in the second half of this race but he has been at the front he has managed this gap well and he's done a phenomenal job 31 laps on the hard tyres Stinos wins the Dutch Grand Prix from his teammate Mark is a Mercedes 1-2 Lerner driver will take third place from Got Spooked in fourth Volcano will be in fifth. Meanwhile, Jack still in sixth place with Ashtube in seventh. Looks like those positions are probably not going to swap. I haven't seen many people manage to beat someone to the line this week. Uh, so Jack in sixth, Ashtube was in seventh, but it's going to be Louis seventh, Ryan in eighth, Ashtube in ninth, ARL. You uh, have a little bit of a spin. Comes home in 10th place with Ginger Tiger, 11th got spooked, driver of the day. Yeah, great racing and, and fantastic work from Stinos. You know, we, we did wonder whether that would be a strategy is just to stay on the hards and try and see it out to the end. And he's, he's managed to make it work. You know, pretty much taking advantage of that free pit stop under the safety car. And uh, yeah, brilliant work from Mercedes guys. But uh, yeah, another one two for Mercedes. I say another one two, but a one two for Mercedes. And um, just strengthening their position at the top of the constructors at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, the, the Mercedes are going to start to run away with this, and um, you get the feeling that McLaren, they can challenge them, but they just seem to have a little bit of bad luck here and there, um, which doesn't help themselves. But uh, Bruce, take us through the provisional race results. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, converting his uh, pole position to a race win, Stinos in the Mercedes with uh, teammate uh, Merck in second, Lerner driver third. That's the top three from qualifying in the same order as well. They got spooked. Fantastic uh, fourth place from 15th on the grid after his qualifying DSQ. Uh, Volcano fifth with Jack sixth. Louis Ryan an eighth. Uh, Ashton ninth. ARL tenth. Ginger Tiger very unlucky tonight. But uh, 11th place and still a couple of points for the Aston Martin driver. Um, with Destiny Owen, Maga and Reshka all DNFing. Uh, and also a mention there for the Lunar Driver for the fastest lap of the evening. It is a 1 minute 10, 5, 7, 1. So we'll see. I think Merkt can actually join us for some interviews. We'll see if he can join us. So hopefully Merck can can join us. It'd be um, good to speak to the person who's the defending champion. But uh, yeah, it was uh, as we expected, Bruce. It was a, a bit of a chaotic race, especially in the opening five six laps. Yeah, it was, uh, and obviously. I, I, I always blame a bit of commentators curse for that because at the start I was saying how it had been quite sedate at the start of most of the races this uh, this week and uh, obviously then it all sort of kicked off tonight but um, yeah definitely uh, I don't think it was enough to really alter people's strategies too much but um, yeah definitely added a little bit of intrigue um, it's just obviously disappointing for the guys that retired due to those uh, due to those incidents. And uh, for the first time, and hopefully everyone will be able to hear him, um, we welcome Merck to the commentary box for post-race interview. Uh, Merck, congratulations, second place tonight. Just didn't quite have enough in the tank to, to catch your teammate tonight, right in right at the end of the race. So I mean, we we did wonder if maybe the, your tyres had gone off at the end because obviously the, you, you had a uh, quite big charge and all of a sudden it kind of slowed down and halted a little bit. But um, obviously er, early on in um, in the race, you had the two safety cars to start with. I mean, what was kind of like going through your head through those safety cars? Because obviously, were you expecting Stenos to to pit then, or were you expecting to maybe pit a bit later? Because it seemed from from our point of view, it seemed quite early to be going on to those hard tyres. Yeah, Bruce, do you have any questions for Mac? Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, you guys had a pretty strong lead in the constructors going into tonight. Um, a one-two tonight strengthens that. Uh, do, do you think pretty much you've got this wrapped up now in the constructors? Uh, and also, obviously, you're in a really strong position in the drivers. Um, who do you feel is maybe going to be a, a biggest threat that can maybe come back at you towards the second half or towards the end of this season?
um, obviously next week we have uh, a sprint week in, in Monza. I mean, how do you feel about Monza and, and, and that being a sprint race for for yourself? Well, congratulations, Merck. Thank you for joining us for the post-race interviews. But we uh, we we move on, Bruce. Obviously, I, I, I am kind of going to wait a little bit because I can see Sinos typing, so he's obviously got quite a bit to say about his race. Um, but as, as I say to Merck, we've got a sprint race next week in Monza. I mean, if you think Zandvoort and Monaco is crazy, I mean... A sprint weekend in Monza, that's going to be pretty action-packed as well. I mean, we know how close the racing can be at Monza and, and some of the potential dangers with the high speeds and, and the heavy braking zones. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think with, with the nature of Monza, with it being, you know, there aren't many corners. Uh, obviously, sticking in DRS is, is vital around that circuit. But I, I think you could see maybe a couple of names closer to the front end that you wouldn't normally see just purely because it's a, a more straightforward track compared to most so uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see if uh, if we can get a couple of uh, names just to mix it up a little bit at the front um but yeah with the added uh, addition of the uh the, the sprint race as well um yeah i'm pretty sure anything can happen and uh, you know as you say high speeds uh, and the barriers are quite close you know in proximity around most of the circuit as well so uh, it's a, it can be pretty treacherous around that circuit. Um, so yeah, we'll be interested to see how uh, how it goes next week. So, um, ARL was saying uh, it's a shame, yeah, shame he got spun early on, but uh, he'll take that. I mean, his points on the board for for a return to the league, which is always good to see. Uh, and uh, Stinoff saying he's finally back at the top spot. Uh, his qualifying lap was pretty decent. He was afraid the pole would get taken away from him, but luckily Merckx made a mistake. Uh, after the first safety car, he was pulling away from Merck and hoped to maintain that gap for as long as possible. But then the second safety car came out and he decided to go on the gamble to go for the hard for the rest of the race. Um, he was very lucky there wasn't another safety car because that would have made it uh, a bad call. Yeah, after the restart, he had some overtakes on the first lap and was back with the leaders pretty quick. Uh, and then it was just tyre management, and as Merck was saying, his tyres were at 85% at the end, so he was glad there weren't any extra laps, and very lucky to not have a puncture. But for, for now, that is everything uh, for tonight, for tonight's Tier 1 race um, at the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, so we thank everyone for watching us. Next week is going to be Sprint Week at Monza, but we do have more racing action for you this week. Tomorrow we have the Realistic Performance League from the Netherlands. That's going to be brought to you by Malk and Mikey at 8 p.m. And then next week we all go to Monza, starting off with Tier 3 on the Monday with Joe and JP. Tier 2 on the Tuesday with Jack and Zero. And we are back on the Wednesday to bring you the next round of Tier 1. But for myself and Bruce, you've been watching the Invictus Racing League uh, Tier 1 in partnership with Venturi Studios. Thank you all for watching tonight. We hope you have a good rest of your night and join us for more racing action during the course of Season 18.